Hello folks and welcome to Tiny Games Lab. This is a new tutorial on the game mechanic series. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to do this boulder dashing game. Okay, so you see the game on the screen. Basically you move around using your arrow keys and you have this little character that has this easing effect to move around. And as the game progresses you have more boulders coming at you and they're quicker and quicker. When you get hit the game restarts. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing today. And the objectives for this session are to tell you how I do the random spawning of the boulders on the screen, how we use easing functions to move the character on the grid, and how to make this awesome game mechanic. So the game grid is composed of these little squares that are 64 by 64 pixels, okay? And as we stack them side by side, we get a grid. So this is the background I'll be using for the game, okay? And it's just a grid like this, which has 13 cells by nine cells tall. And as I'm counting always, or my top left position is my zero zero of each sprite. So I get this zero to 14 on the top and zero to 10 on the Y axis, okay? So let's say I have the player here. This player is actually positioned at the two and a half and two and a half of the grid. And let's say I have a boulder here. This boulder will be nine and a half on the x-axis and five and a half on the y-axis, okay? So that's how I position all the objects on the game. And how do we spawn those boulders, okay? I'll be using a code like this and I'm gonna explain really quickly what it does, okay? So I'll be randomly choosing between vertical and horizontal boulders. Now let's say I got our vertical boulder. So my X is going to be defined as this formula, which will choose between minus grid size or the room width plus grid size. So it's going to be choosing randomly between these two uh, purplish areas on, on the side of my game grid. Okay. And the Y is going to be like from two and a half to seven and a half. So it's going to be choosing a position within this smaller now two red areas. For the horizontal boulders, same thing, okay? So I'm gonna use the Y, it's gonna be the formula of grid size and room height in this case, plus grid size. And the X position is gonna be this one, so we're gonna be spawning boulders only on these positions, okay? And we're gonna draw the boulders using a draw cell function, pretty standard forward, okay? So let's say I have this boulder here, this boulder here, this here and this here before they actually go into the screen. And what I'll be doing, I'll be drawing indicators and I'll clamp them to the room size, okay? So basically, I'll be clamping them to this dashed area and I'll have the indicators shown like this. Very simple, very straightforward. And for the player movement, we'll be easing the player movement. And I like easing because it gives you a little more feeling to the game, okay? Because nothing in the nature, nature moves straightforward right away, okay? So everything accelerates, just decelerates and all that. So what is easing? I'm just gonna show you, I have this graph which show you a value between zero and one on the Y axis and the time on the X axis. And basically that's a linear interpolation. So what, what we will be doing is using a function called ease impact, which actually Okay, so I'm showing you what's linear, and this function, what, what it does, is actually giving you this little curve here. And I'm going to show you. Okay, so these two movements take exactly the same time to reach the end. Well, the first one is linear, while the second one is this easy impact function, and that's what we're going to use to move the player around in the grid. Okay, so let's head to the code. Okay, so let's add some sprites. Create sprite from image. I'm going to start by the boulder sprite. And let's give it a name. So it's going to be Sprite Boulder. And I'm going to set the origin to this point right about here. And the collision mask, I want a manual collision mask. And I want it to be like the part of the boulder that's actually going to be, let's say, touching the ground. So right about here. Okay. So if we're behind the boulder, we won't get any collision from the, this boulder itself. And I'm good with this. Let's add a new sprite, sprite from image. And let's add a player. The player is going to be composed of these three sprites here. Okay. Let's give it a name also. Sprite player. Okay. 
I'm gonna set up also the origin to here because it's kind of a ghost, so it's floating. And collision mask, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna be a manual collision mask. And I want it to be, let's say, the projection of this player to the ground. That's it. That's my collision mask, perfect. Okay, so let's add a couple more sprites. Next one's gonna be this indicator arrow. For this one, I'm gonna set up on the middle. Looks good. And let's give it a name also. Let's call it sprite indicator. And the last one is gonna be our background. So this is our background art. And also let's give it a name. Perfect. So next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna add a script. So create a new script. I'm gonna give this script a name. Let's call it easy back, easy in back. Okay. And let's give it some code. So I'm gonna start by setting up the script, which is gonna be taking time and total time as variables. And I'm gonna set up the variables. So T is gonna be argument zero, that is the time. D is gonna be argument one, which is the total time. C is gonna be equal to one, that's the change in value for the easing. And B equals zero, that's initial value. So I'm gonna go from zero to one with this kind of easing effect. I'm gonna set up this S variable and the code of the script is just like this. So T is gonna be equal divided by D and I'm gonna return this formula here. Okay, so with this, that's our easing script, which is gonna be giving us that little effect of the player moving, nice little effect. Okay, so let's create an object. This is gonna be my object controller, so let's give it a name. Object controller, perfect. Let's add a create event to it. And let's add some code. So I'm gonna start by setting up my variables, which is gonna be grid size equal to 64. And my x x position is gonna be grid size times two and a half, and my y y position is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna use this as a border on the top left of the game. I'm gonna instance create layer. So I'm gonna use grid size times seven and a half and grid size times five and a half. So this is the middle of my room and I'm gonna create an instance layer and the object layer, okay. I'm gonna set up my timers for my new boulders to start. So my maximum timer is gonna be 60. It's gonna take 60 frames or steps for a new boulder to show up. And my timer is gonna be equal to my maximum timer. And I'm gonna set up my variables for the easing effect of the player movement. So it's gonna maximum ease or max ease is gonna be equal to eight and ease timer is gonna be equal to max ease. So it's gonna take eight frames for or eight steps for the player to move from one grid side, one grid position to the next grid position. I'm gonna randomize my game. Okay, so randomize, use this function to randomize everything. And I'm done with the creation code. Let's go to the step code. The step event is gonna take a little bit longer it's gonna be a big step event because everything is gonna be running in team within this object so first thing we're gonna check if the player is moving or not so I'm gonna check if the ease timer is equal to the maximum ease timer which means that the player should not be moving and I'm gonna set my target X to zero so I'm gonna reset my X and Y movement targets okay player X position I'm gonna round it using this formula, which is actually just rounding it every single frame to make sure that I am in the middle of the grid position. So let's say after movement, I'm off by one pixel or two pixels. This is going to round my position, my X and my Y position of the player. Okay. And let's close this down. Round position. Perfect. I'm going to check for the player input for movement. So this is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to check if keyboard pressed, VK up. So I have pressed the up key. What I'm going to do, I'm going to target, set my target Y to minus grid size, and I'm going to set my easy timer to zero. 
I'm gonna check then for the down key. Okay. I'm gonna set my target Y to minus grid size and my ease timer to zero again. Then I'm gonna check else if, if we keep keyboard check pressed, VK left, okay. I'm gonna set my target X to minus grid size and my ease timer to zero again. And I'm gonna do the last one, which is gonna be checking for the right key. So if you press the right arrow key, plus grid size and zero, perfect. Okay, so we have checked for all the movements. I'm gonna clamp my positions or my target's positions to the game grid. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the X position of the player and I'm gonna check if I add my target, do I go outside of the screen somehow? So do I go outside of the two and a half and the 12 and a half positions of the game? If I do, I'm just gonna set my target to X, my target X to zero and my ease timer to my maximum is time, so I'm not gonna move. And I'm gonna do the same for the Y position. Okay, so I'm checking. If I add the target Y to my player Y position, am I out of bounds on the game? If I am, I'm gonna zero this out and I'm not gonna change the ease timer, okay? So this else statement, basically I have this if statement here that said, okay, Am I not moving? This uh, easing is not running. And I did all these checks. So now with else, what I'm going to be checking, okay, I am moving, so what should I do? So I'm gonna add to my ease timer. I want to add to my player position and I'm gonna use this little delta formula here, which is gonna be my target X times my easing, using my ease timer and my maximum ease time, minus my ease timer minus one, and my maximum ease. This, what is this is actually doing is, is just a delta of movement. So this gives me a position, this gives me my last placement position, and I'm using the delta because I'm subtracting one from the other. Okay, so I'm just moving one delta position on the x direction, and I have to do the same on the y direction. Okay. And minus, and is timer, maximum is timer, okay? So that's my delta y. And I'm gonna adjust my boulder times and create new boulders now. So if my timer is above zero, so the timer is the one that is actually collecting the variable to add boulders, I'm gonna reduce one from this timer. And else, let's say I have reached zero, I have to start adding boulders. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set my maximum timer to this new value, which is gonna be a clamper between my maximum timer minus one and 60 and 50. So what this is basically doing is shortening the time between uh, I'm adding new boulders to the game as the game progresses. So it gets harder and harder each turn. And my timer is gonna be set up back to this maximum timer. And then I'm gonna use this repeat uh, loop to add the boulders. So what this is doing is, as timer is going down, it starts with 60, so I'm just adding one, it's gonna repeat only once. But as the game goes by, this timer variable is gonna go down. Sorry, there's a car alarm here, okay. So if the, time, the maximum timer goes down, this is actually gonna be greater than one, two, three, four, and it's gonna repeat and add more boulders to the game. So I'm using this loop to add more boulders to the game. And within this loop, I'm gonna use a lot of if statements now and randomize positions of the boulders. So the first one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna choose between true or false, that's basically it. And I'm gonna be randomly, randomly choosing between adding a vertical or a horizontal boulder, okay? So let's say it's true, it's gonna set up this variable boulder x to be choose between minus grid size and room width plus grid size. So this is choosing between the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen to add the boulder. And it's gonna be adding it one grid size to the outside of the screen to the left or to the right, okay? And then for my y position of the boulder, I'm gonna use a random placement between two and a half and seven and a half, which is the height of my playable area of the game. 
And let's say that if statement was false, I'm going to do the same, but I'm going to invert it. So my boulder X position is going to be this random formula to choose my X position within the gaming grid. And my Y position, I'm going to randomly choose between minus grid size and room height plus grid size. So that's outside of the room or the top or on the bottom of the screen. Okay. And let's close this. And with that, I can add a boulder. So I'm using this width statement. I'm going to create this instance, boulder X and boulder Y position on the instance layer. And it's going to be object boulder, which I'll add in a couple minutes. And with this instance, what I want to do, first I want to set the speed. I'm going to use this little formula here. What this formula is doing is I'm setting the speed to 8 divided, uh, grid size divided by 8. So it's going to take 8 frames to cross one grid size or eight steps to cross from one position degree to the next. But I'm going to add this little variable here, which actually is very similar to what I was doing right here. So as the time goes by, as you keep playing, the maximum time is going to be lower. So this is going to be higher and it's going to be adding to the speed of the boulder. So the boulders get faster and faster at the games as the game goes by. Okay. And my timer is going to be other timer minus 10. So that's how much time I want to give for my boulders to start moving. Okay. Let's close this with statement. Let's close this and this. And now I want to check for collisions and restart the game if I have a collision. So with my object player, which I have not created yet, but I will. I want to check if I meet the place of my object player is actually meeting a place of a boulder. And if it is, all I'm going to do, I'm going to restart the room. Okay. But this, you should use an end game screen or something like that for your game. And with that, I'm done with the controller object. Okay. So the next objects are going to be a lot simpler than this. Let's start by creating the boulder object. Let's give it a name. Okay, let's call it object boulder. Okay, and let's start by adding this sprite, boulder sprite, and create event. On my create event, I want to set up some variables. Okay, so my speed is going to be equal to zero, and my timer is going to be equal to zero. Those two variables are going to be dynamically set up when I add a boulder to the game. And I want to set up this variable called wait to true. Okay, that's basically our create event for the boulder. Let's do the step event of the boulder. So I want to check if the boulder can move. So I'm going to check if my waiting is true and my boulder timer is above zero. Okay, so if I am waiting and the boulder time is greater than zero, I'm going to remove one from the boulder time. Okay. What I'm going to do while the boulder is waiting to move, I'm going to set up the direction the boulder has to move. Okay. So I'm going to use this little formula here. That's going to check if the start position, X start position is greater than zero or, and the X start position is less than room width, which means that the boulder is within the room itself. If it is, I know it's a boulder that has to move vertically. Okay. And I'm going to set up my direction to a point direction between X start and Y start and X start again. And my room height to divide it by two. What I'm doing here is just, I'm using this little point direction formula just to get if it needs to move downwards or upwards. Okay. That's basically it. If not, it has to move uh, horizontally. So the formula is going to be the same here, but now I'm going to use room width divided by two and then Y start. Okay. Let's close this and else let's say it needs to start moving because the timer has hit zero. Let's move. So the speed is going to be my boulder speed and my weight is going to be false. So it's not waiting anymore to move. And lastly, I'm going to check if I'm out of the screen. So I can delete myself. I don't want a lot of objects to be created and not deleted. So I'm going to check if my weight is equal to false. And 
I'm going to check my absolute value is greater than room width plus two times the grid size because uh, I started one grid size outside of the screen on the top, let's say, and I'm one size, one grid size outside of the screen on the bottom. So I want to check two times and I wanted to do it on the X position and on the Y position. So I'm checking this again. Okay, so let's say I'm out of the screen. I want to destroy myself. And that's basically it. And lastly, I want to adjust my depth to minus Y. Okay, so with Game Maker Studio 2, there are different ways to do it. I mean, using this, that is something that we used to do on 1.4. You can look on, uh, online and see how you would go about setting your depth on a 2.5D game. Okay, I'm just doing this because it's easier. And it works. And lastly, I want to add a draw event. Okay, let's remove this code. And I want to draw my indicators if I'm not moving. So let's say if I'm waiting to start the game, I want to add this. <coughs> Sorry, I want to add these little indicators showing where the boulder is going to come from. So I'm going to use my x x variable to be the climb between x my x variable between 32 and room width minus 32 so that's just to make sure it's within the screen on the x position and on the y position okay so if the boulder is out of the screen the indicator is going to be drawn within the screen on the same uh, parallel line and i'm going to draw my sprite indicator on my x axis and y position that's basically it what i'm going to do i want to use my rotation to my direction of the boulder so it's pointing in the right direction, see white, and that's it. And let's say I'm not waiting anymore, I'm start moving, so I want to draw myself. So I just draw self, and that's basically it for the boulder. Let's close this object down, and let's add the player object now. Create object. Let's give it a name, called object player. Let's give it a sprite which is this little player sprite here and let's add some code to the create event all i'm going to do here is set up my image speed to 0.25 because i don't want it to be too fast i only have three frames and on my step event let's create a new step event what i'm going to do is set my depth to minus y plus one okay so it's a little bit in front of the boulder and the last thing we have to do is add a room to our game okay so let's set up a room create a room okay i want to set up the width and the height of the room so my width is going to be 896 and my height is going to be 640 okay and this is because that's the side of my background sprite let's add a background sprite and on the instance layers let's add the object controller to the room and lastly on the creation code of this room i want to add some code here i want to set up my game speed to 30 frames per second okay because i know it works well with this and let's save the game and let's try it out Okay, so I have my player. I can move around using the arrow keys. You have the boulders coming in the screen and it gets a little bit faster and a little bit harder each time. Okay, and when I hit the boulder, the game resets. Okay, you can see that the game, the player movement is very fluid, which I like it a lot. You can see the indicator arrows work well also. They point in the right directions. Okay, and you can just miss the boulder like by moving when it's almost getting to you and this is the game i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you like this tutorial or if you like my game make maker series tutorials please subscribe to my channel and if you like this tutorial please click on that like button and i hope to see you in the next tutorials thanks and i'll see you next